Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. It's time for another Gonzaga basketball game. They're a perfect 4 0, ranked number eight in the country, and they welcome in the University of Texas at Arlington. Great to see everyone again. And look, the game's all together. Greg Heister, Dan Dick, uh, Richard Fox. Okay, gentlemen, the Zags fresh off that first impressive road game. They beat AM by 30. Yeah, it's impressive. You go on the road to an SEC opponent in their gym, and you come out with a 30-point win. You force AM to 30% from the field, and you get contributions across the board. Pretty impressive. And Richard, oh, the Zags are going to be even better tonight. Well, you're the a top 10 team in the country, and you happen to bring back your best player tonight. And that's Killian Tilly, a guy who two years ago was one of the, one of the best front court players in the country, averaged 13 a game, nearly six rebounds. Defensively, he brings you a ton on that end of the floor. Not only can he protect the rim, but he's likely Gonzaga's best big guarding on the perimeter, switching against smaller players. And it's his skill level that really sets him apart. He's Gonzaga's best three-point shooter, having shot 47% from the three-point line two years ago. Athletic enough to make some plays at the rim. Excellent in the pick and roll. And he just has a really good feel for where he needs to be on the floor. And he's one of those guys who makes players around him better. The, the, the game, the offense just flows that much more efficiently with Killian Tilly on the floor. And then with Killian Tilly plugged into the lineup, now there's a trickle-down effect, right? The team really deep at four and five. So what happens? Well, it's going to be interesting to see the direction the coach view goes. But the nice thing is, is all three of the young players, Petrushev is a sophomore, Watson and Timmy as freshmen, have had some unbelievable bright spots early in this game. And they do their damage in different ways. Petrushev has been great on the low block. Watson is kind of a, a inside-outside threat. And Timmy just continues to do everything under the radar. Shoots it at 70% from the field through four games. Coach Q has an abundance of riches in the front court. Ladies and gentlemen, Killian Tilly back in the lineup for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're 4-0, ranked number eight in the nation. They go for another win tonight against UT Arlington. Starting lineups tip off when we come back. Northern Quest Resort and Casino. The clock never winds down at Northern Quest. With 24-7 gaming, great restaurants and lounges, movie theaters, luxury rooms, and more. Details at northernquest.com. And a beautiful night here in the city of Spokane. And of course, the city always excited about their basketball. Gonzaga unbeaten 4-0. Number eight in the country, UT Arlington. They call them the Mavericks in town tonight. They're two and two. Greg Heister, Dan Dickow, Richard Fox. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. And the lineups look like this. You've got Woolridge, Gilder in the starting lineup, along with Kispert. There you see Killian Tilly, Philip Petrushev. This is a Mavericks team with Warren Azor. They're going to shoot a lot of threes, gentlemen. Gonzaga is going to have to really be active defensively tonight. And they're going to have to do a great job of executing the game plan, the scouting report, and running the shooters off the three-point line, making them become playmakers. And there's the head coach of UT Arlington, Chris Ogden, in his second season. And he's rebuilding a program. He's excited about his team. He, they came within a win a year ago. They got to the championship game in their tournament they almost got to the, the NC2A so he believes they're a better team this year time will tell of course the head coach for Mark or for Gonzaga Mark Few in his 21st season winning over 82 percent of his games and tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino for Gonzaga defend a three UT Arlington We'll put up plenty tonight. Know the scouting report, execute it, run the shooters off the three-point line. And look, this is an Arlington team that is really good taking care of the ball. Less than 10 a game. We're the best of the country uh, 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 protecting the basketball. You've got to try to speed them up a little bit, make them uncomfortable here on a, in a true road environment. There's a Mavericks team that shoots 33s a game. That's 54.5% of their field goal attempts. 
will come from behind the line even though coach Hawkins told us day before the game that he doesn't want to shoot as many but he may be forced to tonight. Well they shoot right at 30 percent on the year but in talking to him before the game the numbers aren't indicative of their ability from beyond the arc. And you know Tilly very excited his first action on this season. He's a guy that has battled the injury bug throughout his career. But when he is on the floor for Gonzaga, he's as good as you'll find in this country as far as a skilled six foot ten inch player goes. It'll be Mavericks basketball. We're underway at the McCarthy Athletic Center. This is Alame over to Azor now into the corner. Right away you see just how much bigger Gonzaga is with Tilly in the starting lineup versus Watson. Tilly at 6'10", 6'11", Watson at 6'8". It's that much more length up front. Seven on the shot clock as Warren backs it out with Woolridge there defensively. And now you see the switch shot over Petrushev in and out. Woolridge the rebound. And they're going to leave Woolridge open. They yes. challenge him to shoot that and to make it. And he misses a little long on that attempt. Well, that's something I think you will see throughout the year at times. Woolridge not known as a great shooter over the course of his college career. He shot it well up to now this season. Yeah, 5 of 5 for the year. He's got to take the first one. You can't hesitate when you're that open. Azor for their first bucket of the game. Davis Azor, redshirt sophomore out of Houston, Texas. 2 nothing Mavs. Tilly, here's his first attempt. And is he excited? Like he never missed a beat. That was in rhythm. That looked good. And the head coach of the Mavericks told Dan and I before the game, hey, thanks to Coach Few for putting Tilly in here tonight for the first time this year. <laughs> As Narcisse lines up the answer and UT Arlington back on top 5-3. Narcisse at 6-9 shoots about 35% for the three-point line, so he can stretch it a bit. It's going to be important tonight that he stays out of foul trouble inside. Petrushev, the quick move to the baseline, is short with the left hand. And Warren now on the other end goes right at Tilly. Reset. Here's Sparling for three. That's off. Petrushev, the rebound. Coleman Sparling out of Ellensburg, Washington, took that last shot. He's got about 35 friends and family here tonight. A lot of people know his dad, Greg, longtime coach at Central. Now at Alaska Fairbanks, he wants to play well tonight. Will Rajo for two now to start the game as he, with a wry smiles, looks at the bench over there. He'll challenge him. Sooner or later, they'll go in for Ryan Woolridge. 12 on the shot clock. This is Alame with Kispert there. There was a travel. I was going to say he just got away with a travel, but the turnover. And that is our first turnover of the game. Here is head coach Chris Ogden of UT Arlington. And you remember him well. Yeah, he's backup point guard to TJ Ford and a lot of Rick Barnes' good Texas teams. Played against him actually the great Alaska shootout my senior year. Kispert shot fake, missed it. Tilly the rebound. Gilder now the runner in the paint in and out. And the rebound for number two, Jordan Phillips. He's got the ball for the Mavericks. Tilly showing no signs of rust. Looks good, fluid with his movement. And he did exactly what Zag fans have come to expect. Do the little things there on the offensive glass. Patrick Wamba, number 22. Actually, yes. Yeah. And contact. And the game already physical. As Davis Azor slow to get up, but he appears to be fine. Azor with a great back cut there late in the clock. Gilder gets caught. Tilly tries to go straight up, but just a lot of contact there. Gets the foul. And if you're Gilder there, that late in the clock, force the catch on the three-point line and get up into the ball. You don't need to overplay quite so much. Azor true on the first free throw. Sam Griffin, number one, a freshman from Miami, replacing Brian Warren for UT Arlington. If you're Coach Ogden, you really like the start that your guys have come with. They're patient on the offensive end in their motion offense, doing a great job of reading screens. You get out and you're denied. Back cut 
they're going to play at their own pace. They will selectively run, but they want to get paint touches off the dribble drive, open up three-point opportunities. Petrusha the catch, and there you see the high-low, but Phillip can't convert it. Zags one of seven now to start this game on the offensive end. So far, Arlington's done a good job at around the rim of challenging shots without fouling. Lamy drives on Tilly. And now Griffin with six on the shot clock. A long way away. The switch. Petrusha on the much smaller Griffin shot away. No good. Admon Gilder up to Petrusha who's running the floor. Left hand goes. Great look ahead, but an even better catch and finished by Petrusha. Yeah, just a mistake there from the, the freshman Griffin. You've got to stay with Petrusha until your big recovers, gets down the floor. Alame. Open inside as Gilder gets beat. That's DeAndre Jackson Young with the easy two. And Kispert has his shot blocked at the other end. 15-24 to play first half. UT Arlington with some muscle as you see a beauty. Great pass from Gilder and Petrushev to finish. The Mavericks have come to play in Spokane wide open on the backside. It's 9-5 as we start in Spokane. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. 9-5 lead for UT Arlington. Chris Ogden in his second year has brought fundamentals to this program, gentlemen. He wants to win on both ends, but you can see by these numbers. Yeah, Dan talked about defending the three-point line, but this is the strength of this program to start early in Coach Ogden's career is on the defensive end. This is a program that takes a lot of pride on that end of the floor. They're guard the three-point line. All over the floor, they do a good job. Only teams under 43%, and they make their free throws. So in tight games, they've got they find ways to win those tight games. And what I love about UT Arlington, they're going to go 12 deep. Like it, just about everybody over there on they the bench are. is going to play in the first half. And this is daring Woolridge yeah. to shoot at the top. Yeah, we've not seen this yet this year. Here's Kispert and Gilder, the three on the way that rimmed out. Timmy pushed out of the way, and a foul called. On Patrick Wamba, number 23, that'll be number one on him and the team. Coach Ogden doesn't agree with the call. I think if we saw the replay, I saw a good push from over here. Gilder. There's Woolridge driving. And, and that's what he has to do. He's got to drive, get into that gap. He misses the shot. Uh, but you can't be caught in paralysis on the perimeter if they're not guarding you. You've got to close that gap with the defender. Ayub Nuhi into the game for UT Arlington as that shot from Warren rattles out. Warren has started off the season in a bit of a funk. A season ago, he's their leading scorer. First team all Sun Belt. He's going to get it going at some point. But Timmy, the great patience. On the low block, jump hook over the left shoulder. Yeah, you said Warren, the two of 19 to start the year from three. He's going to get going offensively at some point. He's too good a player not to. Woolridge trying to deny that pass. Anton Watson with the deflection. It went right to Warren, though. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Wamba. Step back from the free throw line is long. Woolridge clears it for GU. Trailing by a bucket, a three will give him the lead. Timmy with a great rebound. Gilder driving in. The teardrop goes, tied at nine. Contact but no whistle. Nice little teardrop there from Admont. Second chance opportunities leading to a bucket there. It's interesting, it's first time all year somebody has really tweaked the scouting report against Gonzaga, and it's really 
gapping Woolridge and daring him to shoot from the perimeter. It honestly reminds me when I was in Colorado, that's how we played Doug Gottlieb, who could not shoot at all as Arlington Griffin knocks down a little jump shot. Gottlieb, similar to Woolridge, and he impacts the game in many ways with his passing, but Kispert, good to see after struggling at AM, going one of ten. He was on balance that time. And Tango with their first lead at 12 to 11. Wamba's shot is off. Watson clears it. Zags are 5 of 15 offensively to be begin the game. Timmy back to Watson. Couldn't make the catch. And Phillips now battling his way to the rim. Missed it. Shot again through Timmy is good. An extra effort there from Phillips inside. Nobody really picked up the ball. Just trying to get a cheap steal. Pick up the basketball. Slow it down. Gilder working his way in, and the acrobatic spin and finish. Wow, wow. tightrope along the baseline. All that work with strength coach Travis Knight paid off. The balance of the strength leads to two. Petrushev will be coming in next whistle. There's a deflection out of bounds from Kispert, 10 on the shot clock. 11.55 to play first half. Gonzaga 6 of 16 to begin. The Mavericks are 5 of 12. And Gilder with a highlight. The fancy footwork. Smiles of the game are brought to you by Delta Dental. Find the easiest way to take care of your smile at deltadentalwa.com. With easy online tips and tools to keep you and your smile strong all season long. Brought to you by Delta Dental of Washington, proud supporters of Healthy Smiles and your Gonzaga Bulldogs. Zags have hit their last four shots after starting two of 12. Hey, Richard, so what did you do on your days off? Well, I rested. Are we better now? Are we feeling I took better? your advice and got elderberries. Elder, did you eat a lot of them? Uh, I mean, several containers worth. Okay, good. There's a shot from three that's long by Radshot Davis. Timmy for the head of steam. Tough pass for Petrushev to handle. And back come the Mavericks and Brian Warren. I can only imagine if Coach Jerry Krause is watching right now. He's screaming at the TV. Quick stop, yeah, quick stop. Seriously. He's not watching, trust me. <laughs> Here's Davis. And the turnover. Anton Watson with Warren chasing. And Anton will shoot free throws. And Great. you can see that, uh, what do we call that? The tape on the left shoulder following that shoulder injury. Kinesio tape. a and &M. Thank yeah. you, Dan. You could have waited till I got the... The rest of it out, but what is it? Kinesio tape. Kinesio tape. Why well, you look to Richard for confirmation? Well, <laughs> so tell us. I never tell, tell our tape. fans I like, just... what is the tape to? Is that placebo or is that actually doing something to hold the what shoulder? What is Dan? Was Dick all of a sudden a certified I'm not trainer? A trainer. Well, he he knew what the <laughs> what name I... of the tape was. Just because I know the name of something doesn't mean I know all the details. Well, you I think the idea is it's supposed to make the shoulder feel a little bit tighter. Yeah, uh, and so obviously his shoulder popped out against a and Yeah, but and Anton, it was popped back in. Tough kid, back on the floor, no problem. It's got to still hurt, though. If you've ever taken a bone out of the socket. And there's a shot from the corner that's good by number 13, Jabari Narsis. A senior out of Trinidad and Tobago. Second three of the night. He has done a good job stretching the floor for Arlington. If you're Petrushev, you've got to get out there and get a hand up. And there's a bump and a foul called on number four, it's Davis it, Azor. I'm sorry, Greg. It's really interesting to see what Arlington's doing defensively. With Woolridge, no interest in getting out of that painted area. They're doing the same thing with Petrushev as well. They want to see those two knock down a couple before they extend that defense. And that allows for them to have a guy kind of playing center field, just helping either be doubling down on the low block or helping on cuts. Petrushev left open. He shoots the three. 
Joel Ayayi on the floor for Gonzaga as Timmy went out. Dan, you never had this problem, but I, this, they played me this way all the time. It really messes with your mind. Oh, for sure. They don't guard you at all when you, when you do decide to take the jump shot. He'll get used to it. He'll start making them. To the post. This is Sparling. Eight on the shot clock. Azor working on Petrushev. Slips. Picked up by Ayayi. Gonzaga with numbers. Bounce pass. Tilly went for the jam and lost the ball on the way up. Yeah, they Warren got a piece of it. Yeah, good hands. A good recovery there defensively for Arlington. Has done a good job taking care of the ball, as we know they do. Narciss needs some help. Tilly deflected it away, but Sparling picks it up. And this is Azor. Got Petrushev in the air. No whistle. Warren for three on the other side. And that bucket good. The senior out of Indy. And a nice extra pass there. Led to the open three on the wing. Spalding gave up a decent look. Warren knocks it down. Ayayi, a little fake to the left. Shoots the three. Loose ball. Tilly on the floor. Picked up by Watson. Here's Kispert in rhythm. Three is long. Big look here for Gonzaga with Watson playing on the wing. Uh, this might be one of the biggest lineups Gonzaga has ever put on the floor. Ayayi, your smallest at 6'5". The ability to switch one through five right now on the floor because Petrusha has switched every pick and roll in late clock, si clock situations tonight. Warren found a spot. Missed the shot as the shot clock horn went off. Ayayi down to the baseline. Throws up the runner well short. It's a quick shot. Got to give UT Arlington a ton of credit. They're getting back in defensive transition, not allowing Gonzaga to get out for easy buckets. And then defensively, you've talked about it a couple times, gapping of shooters at the top, whether it's Woolridge or Petrusha, has really put some stagnant offense in Gonzaga's Narciss. Wow. His third Over of the night. Petrusha. Timeout Gonzaga. Yes. The Mavericks up by five with 8.06 to play here in the first half. Yep. Tell you what, Arlington is not afraid. They have come to play tonight. Knocking down the three point shot, playing high level defense. We've got a game, folks. Led all scores in last season's 89 55 win against UT Arlington. Was it Petrusha, Perkins, Kispert, or Hachimura? Text your answer to 27297. Guys, UT Arlington on 9 0 run. Gonzaga's not hit a field goal in the last four minutes and six seconds. How do they switch the momentum around here? Well, you got to give UT Arlington a ton of credit. They're executing a game plan, getting back. In transition, taking away the easy ones and putting some doubt in their mind. You know, Gonzaga, I think, needs to get out, try to get an easy bucket in transition. But when you send all five guys back, it makes it difficult. A little zone here from Arlington. I think if you're Gonzaga, you got to get the ball in the low block or against his zone, that high post area. That's where Tilly typically is so good. And you see that bucket right there at the nail. It just fills up against that zone long enough to shoot over the defense. This is Sam Griffin, number one. But on the offensive end, UT Arlington doing a nice job playing at their pace. They're not getting sped up. They're not turning it over against Hughes' length and pressure. And they've been able to knock down shots. Griffin shot for three is off. Petrusha with another rebound. There's Ayayi. Fake the three. Tilly will shoot it from out there. That's off. Gonzaga struggling shooting. A lot of stuff on the perimeter. Show a little more patience against that zone. See if you get that high post catch again. If nothing else, you're going to draw the defense in. Kick it out to a three in rhythm. Alame for three. That shot's well on. Maybe to the quickest poor shot of the night so far for UT Arlington. The deflection. Kispert runs it down. Gonzaga's two of their last ten from three. 
High low, Tilly. Quick pass to the corner. Back to Gilder. That three in and out. Tip back, Tilly won't go. Good There's a lid on the bucket right now for Gonzaga. Yeah, that's the truth, but it's a nice possession. You got into that high low, and you see the skill level for Tilly. Just the touch pass to the corner led to the Gilder three at the top. Wamba into the paint, poked away. Kispert with it. Into the paint, Petrushev. A lot of contact, no whistle. Here's Action Phillips. Hands. Wombo Behind the, the back, steal. down the lane, trying to score. It goes out of bounds. And possession goes to Gonzaga. It's a lot of contact there on that drive. No whistle on either, both ends. The officials letting the play. Five fifty-eight to play first half. And the Mavericks right now playing their best half of basketball this season. Well, they're a team that last year in Coach Ogden's first year, they, they were trying to find themselves. This year, they're trying to build on the successes they had. If you look at their non-conference, they played at Nevada. They played at Oregon. So they're not afraid to go in and play at difficult places. Deflection. Mavericks defense. This is Newhey. Again, no whistle. Yeah, there's a late whistle. And free throws coming for Ayube Newhey. And Kispert picks up his first personal, and that is two on GU. McCoy just picks up his dribble there. Really didn't need to put it on the deck initially. Uh, leads to the silly turnover. Front end is good. Four turnovers now for Gonzaga this half. But the story right now, there's seven of 25 shooting the ball. Two of 11 from behind the arc. I can't remember when we've seen a half of basketball from a Gonzaga team with those sort of shooting numbers. Well, it's typically at home. In the friendly confines of the kennel, typically Gonzaga's going to get you over 50% from the field. But to start tonight, you, you said it, Greg. They just struggled. Gonzaga shot the ball over 50% from the floor in the last 15 home games as Timmy with great footwork and hits the jump hook. I think at this point you almost got to force it onto that low block. At some point, Arlington's going to have to send more help. You can open up those jump shots. And that's where Gonzaga's been their most effective this year, Dan, is when they played inside and out. They got so many options on the interior. And especially now with Tilly back, makes them even more versatile with how they can play. Five on the shot clock into the corner. Knew he's got a hurry, got the shot off, hit the rim. But Woolridge with the rebound for GU. Ryan into the paint. Every pass and shot right now contested. And Gilder hits a tough one off the glass. With that possession, they got it up the floor and they got it from side to side. And then Gilder attacked the closeout. Don't have to settle for that outside shot. And we've got a timeout on the floor by UT Arlington. But the Mavericks right now with a three-point lead, 424 to play in the first half against the eighth-ranked team in the country. Gilder to Timmy. Great bucket there. Gonzaga needed it. 9 of 27 in the game. And then Gilder, another tough one off the glass. Back in a moment. Gonzaga Hoops is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is an electrolyte drink mix that can provide two to three times the hydration of water. Translation, feel better, faster. Order now at liquidiv.com and optimize your hydration. And welcome back to Spokane. Gonzaga down by three with 424 to play here in the first half. Here's the answer to tonight's Arby's fan trivia question. Who led all scorers last season in the big win against UT Arlington? It was Rui Hachimura with 20 points and 11 rebounds. All right, gentlemen, Gonzaga struggling offensively. But on the flip side, the Mavericks have put up 24 points, which isn't bad, but if it's not working at one end, it's got to work at the other, right? Yeah, but this is the pace Arlington's going to want. 
the number of possessions, they've really shortened the game with respect, with respect to how many possessions Gonzaga's gotten so far to start the ball game. Nice rebound by Timmy off the Davis miss. Kispert tees up the three. Goes out of bounds, UT Arlington basketball. Kispert now one of three from behind three. Actually one of four. Corey's really struggled. He's 40% on the year, but coming off a game where he shot one of seven against AM from behind the three point line. You know this, Dan. He just has to continue to search out those shots. He's too good a shooter. It's too important for Gonzaga that he knocks Jordan down right. the three point shot. And UT Arlington constantly bringing fresh bodies in the game. Yeah, and it's the, it, the action away from the ball is what's impressive. They, they occupy all five of your defenders, even those guys not that aren't in the direct action with the ball. Nice pass inside. Azor kicks it to the corner. And now Warren with three on the shot clock. Shoots it over Woolrich. Watson with the box out and rebound. Woolrich drives, throws it up off the glass. That was beautiful. That's what I think he does so well is push it in transition and just probe. He wasn't really stopped and at that point you're within range of a floater. Put it up on the glass because but you've got some great rebounders behind you. He lulls you to sleep and then there's that quick burst to the glass. Love it. Shot way off by Jackson Young. Watson another rebound. Tough shot there from Young. Zags on a 6-0 run and Woolridge a tough one there. And Back comes the Mavericks. There you see, though, UT Arlington gets the stop because they get back in transition and build a wall, and now they're going to slow it down. I mean, they're literally not sending anybody to the offensive glass. No. All five guys on the shot are going back. This reminds me of the way the Bennett's used to play down in Pullman. Slow it down, keep the game in the 50s. Bodies everywhere, goes out of bounds. And after doing a great job taking care of the ball, first 16 possessions, Arlington with only one turnover, they've got six cents. Six turnovers since starting the game off, really taking care of the ball. They just need to slow down a little bit. There, Warren over-penetrates, looks for the foul, doesn't get it. Watson left all alone. He'll shoot the three. Saga just not shooting the ball. Well tonight. Well, I'm telling you, Greg, it messes with you when a guy's playing eight, nine feet off of you. There's a whip pass inside. Great catch by Warren, but he can't finish. And Woolrich left it for Watson. Petrucci, actually Timmy, shot was blocked inside. Hey, Narciss has come to play. It's his second block Narciss of the night. Jabari had one on Kispert earlier. Three of three from the three-point line. This after struggling at Oregon, where he was 0 of 4 from the field. He has been everywhere. Ten on the shot clock. Azor drives. Timmy picks up the loose ball. Woolridge left it for Gilder. Back to Kispert. Back to Admon. Shot for three is off. And it's run down by Narciss. For the Mavericks, just don't give up anything easy. Have a solid possession here. Don't give up something in transition. Get back and guard the ball. Davis Azor with the ball and looking at his head coach. There's nine on the shot clock. Phillips sets the screen. You see the switch. Watson guarding Azor. Ball into the corner. Shot for three is good by Ayub Nuhi. And it's back to a four-point UT Arlington lead. Woolrich left all alone. Bang! But the difference in that and the other ones that he's taken is he shot it with confidence and he shot it with, in rhythm. It's a one-point game. Six-second differential with the two clocks. And the Mavericks... Draining it down. Ten. Warren. Stop and stutter. Jump shot off. Watson the rebound. Anton. Here's Woolrich. Right down the lane. Left hand up and good. At the horn. Gonzaga takes 
a lead and a foul was called, I believe. No foul. Yeah, there was no foul called. Look at the contact down here, though. That's a no call. Yeah, that's a no call. Second look, no call. But then you see Woolrich, I think, got into a bit of an argument or a discussion with the UT Arlington bench over there, and that's why the officials had to step in. Well, I think that I think the staff at Arlington. Okay, Coach Powell joins us now. Coach, you guys ended that first half on an 11 to 3 run. Woolrich had eight of those points. It we begin the second half between Gonzaga and UT Arlington. Gilder, Woolrich, Petrusha, Tilly, and Kispert on the floor for the Zags. Here's Philip Petrusha. Narciss guarding with Warren. Skip to the corner. Admon drives into the paint with traffic, and he's fouled, and Admon will shoot free throws. Foul called on Davis Azor. But right off the bat, you see Gonzaga trying to go inside to Petrushev. The double from Warren came early. They want the ball out of the low post scoring options and make that weak yeah. side play. And they're coming from the low side, which is also unorthodox. But if you're Woolridge, you've got to dive to the rim, almost like you'd expect Watson or the other big yeah. to dive to the rim when that double happens. You can't just... You know, float around the perimeter. You've got to make yourself available to Petrushev on that double. One of two for Gilder. And Gonzaga now with their largest lead at two points. 29-27. We'll see if Gonzaga can turn over Arlington a bit here and convert on the other end. Averaging 20 a game in the in transition, only four there in the first half. There's Narciss, led him with nine in the first half. Warren was seven on the shot clock, but right at Tilly, and Killian picked up number two with contact on that shot. Did everything right, but then looked to swipe at the ball. So that puts Brian Warren, the senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, at the free throw line. Tied at 29. Didn't have a lot of free throws in that first half. Zag shot two, as did UT Arlington. Well, it was a physical first half, but officials kept it in check. Neither team had anybody in foul trouble. And the reach foul called on Coleman Sparling, the junior out of Ellensburg, Washington. That's number one on him. And the Mavericks with two here to start the second half. And Jordan Phillips into the game as Sparling goes out. Kispert caught in the air. Shot was blocked. There should have been a foul call there as Petrusha converts, but he was hammered from behind. Well, good finish there. Struggled in the first half, one of four from the field. Leading the Zags in scoring on the season at over 18 per game. He's got to get untracked here. Yeah, but that's where Phillips got a lot better. Last couple yeah. of games, nearly four offensive rebounds. He's become a much better rebounder, more physical on the glass. When you're struggling to score on the low block, you've got to find a way to get some cheap points. He did that right there. Seven on the shot clock. Phillips to Warren. Warren into the paint. Hangs and hits. Wow. Off-legged runner. Going to... To his right, left-handed shot. Woolridge into the paint, high off the glass, no good. Got it back, goes up strong, fouled, and will shoot two. See, Woolridge just did one of the two ways you can attack a gapping defense. You can catch and shoot in rhythm as we get another look at Warren's nice step-back floater. But back to Woolridge, if you're being gapped defensively, you either catch and shoot it quickly with confidence and rhythm, or you get 
your head of steam and you attack the defense. That time he attacked the defense, put the foul pressure on, shoot two at the line. And when they're gapping you that way, you know that at this point in the game, that's how they're playing you. You, you can make that decision before the ball gets there. Yeah. So as the ball's getting swung to you, you already you should know I'm either driving or I'm shooting. Well, you're the one that's at an advantage because the defense is back there. And he's fouled. Woolrich one or two from the line, but Petrusha runs down the loose ball. Greg, I think you missed it. I here's missed the, it. Here's the offensive rebound, number two, back to back here for Phillip. And he goes up strong. He did not do that last year, just much more aggressive, looking to get up and over the rim. Zags now lead by three. Phillip, WCC player of the week. Three point play. Petrushev now with seven. Whatever the message at halftime was that was directed there, he took the words and he did the advice, and he's come out to play with much more passion here in the first two minutes. And a whistle. I got a feeling that this game is going to start to get called a lot tighter now. It's taken on kind of a chippy edge here at the end of that first half and the first couple of minutes of the second half. Here's Narciss. Shoots it over Petrucci. Wow. I tell you oh. what. I tell you what. Jabari from downtown. Well, you've got it going. You've got it going. That is good defense. Just a better shot. Now four and four from three. Woolridge left open again, and he hits another one. But in rhythm with confidence. He smiles, but he doesn't look at the bench this time. But he did have a little wry smile as he backed down the court. He's taking it personal. He should. Starting to make Garlington pay. Eight on the shot clock for Warren. Step back. Three ball, no good. Kispert the rebound. Petrushev. Offensive foul called on Phillip. He doesn't like the call. We'll get another look, I'm sure. It was hard to see from our man if the official was running in front of us. Leans back and he lifts up that left arm and kind of displaces the defender. So Phillip goes to the bench. They're working on one of his fingers. I believe he may have gotten cut. I think on that dunk off the offensive rebound, he's got blood coming out. To the post. Kispert there defensively. Back out, shot good by Sparling. Back not to a one-point game. I'm not sure you need to help down there if you're Killian Tilly. No, not at all. Here's Woolridge. Timmy on the floor. Woolridge shot for three is off. Long rebound to Griffin. Now he slows it down. As the Mavericks do. UT Arlington can take the lead with a bucket. If you watch it from home, just watch all the action away from the ball. Gilder with a block on that attempt for three. Woolridge now on the open floor. Into the paint, scoop shot goes! And he's fouled! Woolridge in the double figures with 13. He's electric on the move. And then the spectacular finish at the other end. Back in a moment.
in this game, and he's responded, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been challenged by how UT Arlington is playing him. They're taking him as a non-shooter, and guess what? He stepped up to the challenge in the second half, shooting it with confidence and in rhythm, and pushing it in transition. Six quick points to start the second half for Ryan Woolrich. And let me ask you guys, obviously, the scouting report for UT Arlington says we don't need to guard Woolridge out to, to 20 feet. So has he made enough shots? Is there enough tape now so the next team now has to guard him? I mean, look, he was 5 of 5 coming into tonight. I think it's more of indicative of his career in North Texas. Shot right. about 32, 33 percent. When you're the underdog like Arlington is, you've got to throw something out there. I mean, you're, you're really going to change it up, and they've done that. Uh, no, I, I don't think this is something that Ryan's going to see a steady diet of throughout the year. And we've got an injured Maverick on the floor. I believe that's Nicholas Olame. No, it isn't. It's number 23, Patrick Wamba. And the trainer on his way over there right now. And Patrick obviously in a lot of pain. And the head coach, Chris Ogden, now over to check on his player. Looks like it maybe the ankle. Yeah, on the right leg. Yeah, it's good to see him on his feet. He's battling for the rebound. And watch. It just came down. Ooh. I didn't see it turn too much. Non contact. Yeah, that's uh, one of those injuries that you don't want to speculate, but you see that a lot when there's no contact and you don't see anything turn. Like makes you nervous. Something sure. pops, right? Let's just hope he's cramping. He said he's played hard tonight. And now he's having a real tough time. Yeah, he's having trouble floor. putting any weight now on that right leg. Patrick, a sophomore out of the Congo, 6'6, 196. And that'll quiet things down here in the kennel for the moment. Zags up by three. And the Mavericks now with the basketball. And a whistle. And a foul against GU. And it's on Edmond Gilder. That's his first. And there's four on GU this half. We've already had more fouls called in this first four minutes and 20 seconds than we saw in the entire first half. Narciss. Gilder deflected it away, goes out of bounds. Six seconds on the shot clock for the Mavericks. And Brian Warren, number zero, back on the floor for UT Arlington. He's hunting space. Timmy blocked it. Picked up by Gilder. A three on two, make it a four on two. Watson. And the reverse goes. We haven't seen it much tonight, but Gonzaga is so good at converting those steals or turnovers and getting to the offensive side of the, of the floor as we've got a foul away from the ball. You see the block here. Timmy does a decent job of staying on his feet, keeps his hands up, and Gilder always under control, both he and Woolridge. Watson runs the floor, tough finish inside. Foul called on Joel Ayayi at the other end, and Gilder takes it away. The run out lay in is short, but he's fouled. Gilder's done a nice job in this second half of being a pest on the defensive end. A couple possessions ago, deflected the ball out of bounds. That time, coming up with the steal. The anticipation, the length, the ability to knock it away. Would have liked to have had that one dropped the chance of the three-point play, but he'll take it. Yeah, 
Edmond drops it through. You know that game at Texas A&M was important for him. Absolutely. Going home where he played. Didn't play his final year with the well-documented blood clot in his arm. But as a graduate transfer now making an impact on a top 10 team in Spokane, Washington. And people probably forget, they think because Gonzaga went down and beat Texas A&M by 30. A&M was good a couple years back. They were in the Sweet 16. And another foul called on Gonzaga. This time it's Corey Kispert. And you see the return of both Woolridge and Gilder to the state of Texas. And you know there's a little extra in this game with UT Arlington because a lot of those coaches and some of the players, they know very well who Edmond and Ryan are. Oh, for sure. Gonzaga's recruiting footprint continues to grow and expand. I think Texas has an opportunity to be a really nice place for Gonzaga to recruit out of. But you mentioned UTA and UT Arlington. Coach Chris Ogden was the 1999 Mr. Basketball in the state of Texas. Pretty impressive to be awarded that honor. Now Gonzaga's largest lead of seven is trimmed to six with that free throw. Ayayi on the baseline. Back to Watson. Timmy was open for a moment. Woolridge into the paint. Admon on the hunt. Shot short. Timmy grabbed it out of the air and he's fouled and will shoot free throws. Is that a pass from Admon or was that a shot? <laughs> uh, he wants to say that it's a pass, but it looked to me as if it was a shot. But Gonzaga, nice possession that time. Maybe a couple times Gave up the opportunity for a shot, but that's unselfish basketball. Timmy being active on the glass. Drew averaging over 13 points a game, almost five rebounds. It's a 70, Tonight he's got four. 70 percent from the field. I mean, he's for a young post player. He's so skilled, and he plays at his own pace on the low block. It's really hard to bother a shot. And I believe a technical was just going. Oh, is it? They called a second flop. We didn't know they called the first. Yeah, one. we didn't get that in the day in the first half. But they just called a second flop, so the free throw coming for Gilders. That's a new rule this year. The first flop, when it's called, it's a warning, and it goes under the player cat delay category. That's tough. The second one becomes a technical, and that, I think, is a rule that will be looked at and changed. I've, I've seen it happen a couple times early in this college season, and I don't like it. And that means that Azor did that as well at some other point in the first half when it was not explained to us. You know, but so a technical There's a lot of there. areas to improve the, the college game. That's not one of that's them. That's not one of them. I understand why you want to see that at the next level, but that's a, that's, that's a difficult call I mean this is a tight game Arlington every point is important and there were some of those crazy flops I think is what they're trying to get out of the game right but there I mean you know there's a little cat and mouse going on didn't appear to be all that dramatic Richards, nonetheless Richards touched on their movement on offense but the nice thing is that they always have two actions right one away from the basket one to the basket so it's a curl and it's a pop or it's a straight cut and a slip there's always two things going on difficult to guard yeah and you can't take a break as Arlington misses it badly you cannot take a break defensively all five guys have to be engaged there's Timmy double team shot up falls off rebounded Jordan Phillips Narciss, Warren, and it was only a matter of time. Roll. Soft touch from Warren. He struggled tonight, but he can flat out get it going. Warren with nine points. Timmy into the corner. Woolridge, quick hands, shot for three is long. Timmy tipped back, battling with Narciss, and Warren with it for UT Arlington down by six. A 
again, 10 on the shot clock. Phillips with two on the clock. That's a two. Timmy the rebound. You know, I looking back on it now and being at shoot around and sensing a little more urgency from the coaches today, you're thinking, oh, come on, it's going to be another 30 or 40 points. Coaches always know, don't they? Like when they're looking at the scouting report, the film, they break it down. They know who will give them trouble. Oh, for sure. Gilder active on the glass, coming up with two points there. But, you know, it's always coach speak. They, they always tell their team, don't take anyone lightly. Yes. There's this one was real tonight, though, Dave. Break down the game film. There's a reason they implement scouting reports. But UT Arlington has done a nice job executing. Gilder now with 12 points. Ian Woolridge, the only SAG scorers in double figures. Warren drives. Missed it. Timmy, another rebound. He's got 10 on the game. And Watson at the other end missed. And it's cleared by Griffin. And we've got another injured Maverick at the other end. And it is Brian Warren, their point guard, holding his left elbow. With 11.36 to play here in the second half. And he's able to get up and walk off. We'll take a look when we come back. CSU Bakersfield is next. Southern Miss on the 27, 28, 29. They're in the tournament. What do you guys think of the schedule? I battle for Atlantis may be the best holiday tournament this season. They went down there and played a couple years ago. This should be a good challenge in the opening round. Zags up by eight. Shot from the corner. Kispert tipped it to Tilly. And Zaga can get their lead into double digits. As Woolrich battles, is almost tied up. Here's Ayayi. Left that short. And the rebound by Phillips. He's going right at, oh, Tilly. And Phillips goes awkwardly to the floor. I thought he hurt his leg at first. He's like, lucky to get up on that. Like his left leg slipped out from under him. Yeah. Still think it's called for the foul, but I think he was going down before contact was ever made. But rather, his right foot slipped oh. out from under him. But oof. Now, it's that left leg right there. That, Jordan Phillips out of Fort Worth, Texas at the line. And he makes it a seven-point game. Tilly picked up his third personal foul. Killian has played 16 minutes to this point in the game. One of two. Woolridge digs out the miss. Kispert three. Tilly put back short. Petrusha, Tilly slapped out of there. Woolridge with the basketball. Killian Tilly. And it goes! Uh, he likes it. That's for sure. Taking. Getting it high off the glass to a whole new level. <laughs> it can't get any higher. My goodness. Before this ball hits the glass. <laughs> well, it's out of the frame, it's all. <laughs> oh, they were going to look here. Gillian Tilly. Thank God for the glass. It may have gone to Cheney. <laughs> Zags up by nine. With 10.40 to play. And Gillian Tilly. 
back in uniform. Sixteen minutes. Of course, he's up for just about every award in the country. It'll be interesting to see how you know, his playing time and the fact that he missed the first four games, how it's going to play into all of that. But you saw already in this game what he means to this program and how good he is. Yeah, there's been some mixed, mixed results, but you see how important he is. And look, with the depth they have up front, the fact that Watson and, and Timmy are ready to go now, he's not going to have to play 30 minutes a game this year. Dan, he just offers them a versatility that they don't have in the other bigs. He's a blend guy who's very skilled. He can play multiple That's possessions. He can fix so many problems on the floor. That's a great way of describing him, a blend guy. I like that. Ten-point lead for Gonzaga. Nice catch, but the miss by Davis. Here's Ayayi. Woolridge. No look, Petrucci. And no, no, yes. Travel. I thought he was going to go three seconds. They want to count the bucket. Well, the officials are discussing one. Together. The what? baseline official thought it was a foul before the travel. The outside official. Well, the, the question was, what came first, the, the, foul, the, the foul or the travel? Uh, they're saying that the foul was called first, although I think that was a travel. Uh, and then the contact came, but either way, Patricia's at the line for a couple. We'll get another look at it here in a moment, but foul called on Rashad Davis. And Patricia bent the line with seven points, three rebounds. Here's another look. Well, great feed for Woldridge. You know, he got bumped in the back there, so it may have been the right call. Maybe the foul caused the travel. Well, we couldn't see the feet either in that highlight. Phillip hits them both, and Gonzaga now with their largest lead at 12, 53-41. And Brian Warren, number zero, back on the floor for UT Arlington. Gonzaga's been much better the last five or six minutes of getting out on the catch on the three-point line. Five on the clock. Azor drives. And he is fouled as white jerseys were converging on him. And they give it to Ayayi. Great possession defensively for about 24 seconds. They were switching everything, pushing catches out. And then the ball handler, Azor, got the switch with Petrushev 25, 30 feet away from the bucket. And that's a difficult ask of any big to keep right. him in front with a live ball handler. Azor hits the front end. There were only five fouls called in the entire first half. There's already been 17 called in this half. Azor hits them both. And it keeps UT Arlington within reach. Showing a little pressure that time just to mix things up. Falling back into what looks like a 2-3 zone. Ayayi. Shot wow. for three way off. And the rebound by Jackson Young. And that would get Gilder off the bench. Agmon up, we'll be checking in. <laughs> that, that might be the most uncharacteristic play of Ayayi up to this point in the season. He has been solid. And now he's guarding on the post. Kispert digs in there and deflected it out of bounds. Whistle with 10 on the shot clock. Gilder into the game. Ayayi goes out. Richard called that one. But Ayayi has been incredibly efficient this year. Seven and a half points, nearly eight rebounds, almost five assists, and only two turnovers coming into tonight. Oh, Warren. Looked like Steve Smith running that down in the back of the end zone. Great catch. No shot. Foul call. And it's on Admon Gilder. 
You guys don't know who Steve Smith is. No, I know Steve Smith. Played at Michigan State. Then he was a long-time NBA player. No, he's a hooper. He blazers. He was an all-star. He's a great player. Oh, Steve Smith played for Carolina. Yeah, he was good. And then the Ravens. He was. See, Richard knows. Well, we were calling a basketball game. I figured you didn't have a basketball player reference. Yeah. Yeah, but see, the point was he looked like a football player catching the ball. Okay. I think we all understand. Guys. Okay, good. Nine-point game. Somebody's not going to like that comment. <laughs> I'm sure. Eight-point game. UT Arlington not going away with 8.59 to play. A little press here from Arlington. The Zags worked on this at the shoot-around today as well. No problem. Yeah, but what it does is it forces you to eat some of your clock offensively. You're getting into your set later in the shot clock. Here's Tilly on the drive. A little runner won't go. Great Azor. walkout by Jackson Young on the weak side. Absolutely took any opportunity for Patricia to use his length there. 8.20 to play. Warren. Into the corner, this is Azor. Lost his footing, Warren from the corner. Bang! Warren with 13. What a bailout shot, tough jump shot there on the baseline. And a timeout is called with 8.07 to play. And the Mavericks have cut what was a 13 point lead down to six. And Warren, the senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, fighting and bringing the Mavericks back. American Credit Union. Pay bills, deposit checks, and access your accounts 24-7 with mobile banking at Numerica Credit Union. Plus, show your bulldog pride with your GoZags debit card. Only at Numerica. And welcome back to Spokane, and welcome back to a six-point game at the McCarthy Athletic Center. UT Arlington has scored six in a row now. What was a 53-41 game? 12-point lead, largest of the game. It's a 13 as we went to break. It's now a six-point game. Gonzaga with the ball and 8.07 to play. They've done a nice job of changing up the defensive look. They showed a look, look at two, that. three zone, and then look Warren at back in right man there. just dropping down. Well, the Zags are seeing just about everything they could see the rest of the way in the season, aren't they? In this game. Give UT Arlington credit for really trying to confuse Gonzaga. Woolrich, open three, and Ryan but as will a coach, not look towards that bench again, but you can <laughs> see him smiling inside. You know, but as a coach, sometimes you got to go with your gut. Coach Ogden feels, hey, that's their best opportunity is to make Woolrich think twice. He has not thought twice in the second half. He's played really well. And Woolrich now leads all scorers with 16. Phillips. Against Petrusha and Jordan scores. Seven point game. A little zone here from Arlington. Changing it up after the make. Nice catch by Petrusha. And he is hammered by Warren. That pass almost didn't get there from Kispert. Yeah, you're right. Great catch there from Petrusha, but who's starting to, the defense was going from a three-quarter to a front in that zone. Throw the ball up high where only Petrusha can get it. Throw it to the corner of the backboard. Let him use his length. Well, especially he's got such an undersized defender guarding him. And guys, Gonzaga just two of their last 11 field goals now. We haven't seen a shooting percentage like ones that we're seeing in this ha two halves yeah, and they've in a it. long time by a Zach well, this team. This is a team that shoots 57% coming into tonight. It's one of the best offensive teams yeah. in the country, getting 95 a game. 
Well, you just you have to credit Arlington. I mean, I know Gonzaga's missed some shots, but their scheme tonight defensively has been really effective. Drew Timmy coming in. Petrushev goes out. I mean, when you have a first half where I believe they scored 28 points, that was their lowest half scoring since a 23 point effort. Where was that Brock that you slid me? It's upside down. Here. 23 points in the first half against St. Mary's back in 2016. But it's kind of continued here in the second half. A little better as Woolridge with the rebound. Here's Gilder. Bodies on the floor. Woolridge with some lift off the glass. One of the best ways to beat a zone when you're struggling scoring against it. Get down the floor quick. Yep. Then you put the defense in rotations. Woolridge now with 16. And the turnover. Admon. And Warren may have gotten a finger on that lane attempt from Gilder. The same thing in the first half against Tilly on the break. And a timeout is called by UT Arlington. A lot of credit to this Mavericks basketball team. Well, you said it, Dan. It's, it hasn't come regularly for GU, but when they've been able to get stops, they've been able to get in transition. We saw that on that possession with Woldridge able to get to the rim. Yeah, but even in that possession, Arlington had sent five guys back. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Everybody's back. You know, good patience here from Gilder. Picks it over, and you just see the broken play. Two defenders go down. Nice read. Instant reaction there from Ryan. It's easy, too. And Rolich now with 18 points as they've updated the official stats here. Go back to this stat I had, though. The last time the Zags had trouble scoring 23 points in the first half against St. Mary's in a game they lost. 63-58 in 2016. They've done a little better job of scoring the ball here in the second half, but UT Arlington has made every bucket a struggle. They've contested everything. Well, I think they're just taking Gonzaga out of a lot of the stuff they would normally want to run. With this gapping defense, there's just a lot of bodies in that paint. Seven on the shot clock. Tilly on the floor, loose ball, two on the clock, and there's the violation. Zach Ball. And that's all because of the ball pressure. Tilly's able to apply on the perimeter, moves his feet. It's after the loose ball. And we've talked about him throughout the night, but the thing that he adds is the versatility on both ends of the floor. He's a big that could post you. He's a big that can make nice cuts off the ball and score without having to have a play run for him. He can stretch it. But defensively, he can guard one through five. He can move his feet. He can slide. He can guard a, a post player. Timmy. Jump hook. Long. Narciss with the rebound. I just keep going back to the way that the coaches talked at shoot around today. They were really nervous about this game as the call the foul called on Timmy. And yet you you watch this game today and you know why this is a really physical Mavericks team that seems to be yeah. in the right place all the time. Well coach Chris Ogden has been a assistant for a number of good programs obviously played at Texas under Rick Barnes, but then he was assistant with Coach Barnes at Texas and Tennessee, spent some time at Texas Tech, who Zag fans will know for knocking them out of the tournament last year. I would say that he is one of the up-and-coming coaches in college basketball. Look at the shoulders on Jabari Narciss. 6'9", 240. One of two from the line, nine-point game. And Sam Griffin onto the floor as Warren goes out for UT Arlington. I think if you play for the Mavericks, you're never tired. 
They substitute. Like, there's a, well, I mean, there's a revolving door of players all the time. It sure incentivizes you to play as hard as you can while you're out there on the floor. I mean, you just got to just play in short spurts. Tilly to the rim. The ability to catch the ball on the move at that size, put it down on the deck and finish at the rim is something you don't see very often. Tilly the fourth sack now in double figures with 10 points. 4.25 to play. And it's an 11 point game. Davis. Left hand. Tilly up high. His sixth rebound. Gilder, 10 on the clock, Tilly to Timmy, high low, left hand works. But because you have to guard Tilly at the three point line, right. it gives yep. Timmy all that space for the high low. And what you love is how quickly he went and he got into that move. No hesitation, what, didn't even mess around looking to see if the double was gonna come. And now it's the largest lead of the game for Gonzaga. Wow. At 13 until Narciss hits another three. He's got 16 in this game. 63-53. Tilly to Timmy. But UT Arlington will not go away. Jabari Narciss from downtown. 325 to play. 53 our score, 325 to play. Jabari Narciss for UT Arlington now five of five from behind the three-point line. He's got 16 points. And it's it's not amazing that a guy hits five threes in a game. What's amazing is that when you look at that body, 6'9, 240, you're thinking, okay, post player, right? And yet he's, his whole game has been out behind that arc. He shoots about. He's not known as a three-point shooter. Doesn't take a lot of them, but tonight, a ton of confidence yeah. on every one of those attempts. But he was seven of twenty coming in, so you've got to you got to watch him. Interesting there. UTA tried to quickly foul Ryan Woolridge in the backcourt. They missed. Well, that's interesting to see. Tilly. Gillian drives. Head down. Score the ball. And a free throw coming. Welcome back. <laughs> Gillian Tilly. Well, here's your end of the game guy for Gonzaga, right? Every great team needs a closer. And I think that's a question up till now is who's Gonzaga's closer? on this season. Is it going to be Kisberg or Tilly? Tilly's looked awfully good in his first game this season. His season debut, 12 points on 5 of 10 shooting, 6 rebounds, an assist and an, a steal as well. 12-point lead. Shot missed by Warren. Tilly another rebound. Looking for a guard. Got it to Woolridge. And now they're going to foul Woolridge. And talking with other coaches this season, this is something in Ryan's career that has been deployed at times. Yeah. Not known as a great free throw shooter. And so some coaches have chose to do this. We saw it first with Shaquille O'Neal in the NBA. The hack of Shaq. But when Ryan does that, it doesn't quite work. And what I love about Ryan Woolridge in this game is that he was challenged from behind three. They sagged off. He missed the first couple. But then he was deadly from out there, Dan. Yes. Richard. Two or four here in the second half from three. Yeah. I mean, he's stepped up. And look, that's the way you're going to beat that defense is making shots. Well, it shows you the competitive spirit that he has. 
He gets challenged. He rises to the opportunity. Azor from the corner. They do not give in. Comes off that excellent drive there from Warren. Lead back to 10. And there's Tilly right at Narciss. Controls the ball. Hits the shot. And will shoot another free throw. There was so much composure in that shot and that play by Killian Tilly. And here's Killian Tilly and our multi care play of the game, whether you're at home or in the kennel. Multi care's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. He hits the free throw, and Gonzaga's lead back to 13. And Tilly mopping it up here at the end now with 15 points. Azor fouled by Kispert and a chance for four. Just a miscommunication defensively between Tilly and Kispert. Tilly looking to switch. Kispert hesitates. And with the silly foul there late, you've got beat here. You see, Tilly wants to switch. They've been doing it all night. Kispert just misreads it. Arlington with the chance for the four point play. And Tilly clears the miss. That free throw would have got it back to single digits. Under two to play. Gonzaga trying to get to 5-0. and oh. UT Arlington currently 2-2, two and two, and there's the carry. We generally see that in November. We won't see it in <laughs> December, January, February, and March. But the turnover there, turnover number six for Gonzaga in the game. Minute 45 to play. That three-point line keeps this game alive for UT Arlington, but Warren takes the lay-in. Down to eight. What do you do Gilder you're... bringing the ball up for Gonzaga. What do you do for Arlington? Do you go for the foul on Woolridge, or do you stay disciplined defensively trying to come up with the stop? Gilder to Watson. Here's Admon, eight on the shot clock. Either way, the Zags are taking a lot of time off the clock. Kispert with it, he's got to shoot a deep one. Oh, I thought he buried it. And it's off of Tilly in the corner. So Mavericks basketball down by eight and a minute two to play. Look for that double hot, double screen at the top of the key here. Double ball screen action. Warren driving. Back out on top to Azor. A lot of time on this possession going off the clock. Azor drives on Kispert. Now he needs help. Ten on the shot clock. Drives again. Hangs left hand. Good. Azor with 15. Six point game. And they foul Edmond Gilder. So Gilder's Gilder been. goes to the line where it's four of six today, Dave. Excuse me, Gilder, nine of ten coming into tonight. He's been a good free throw shooter for the majority of his career. The Mavericks on a 7-0 run. And it rims out for Gilder. And really a lot of credit to UT Arlington. They have battled every second of this game. They've kept it low scoring as Gilder is one of two and it's a seven point Gonzaga lead. Warren quick three on the way. Tilly up high. Woolridge with it got it to Gilder but a foul called before Woolridge was able to get rid of that ball. So Ryan Woolridge will go to the free throw line with 25.1 seconds to play. And Ryan Woolridge is our A to Z rental player of the game. No job too big or too small with eight convenient locations. We rent everything. And A to Z rental be your most viable player. Woolridge 
missing the front end trying to get to his 20th point with nine rebounds. They missed them both. Seven point game. Here's Azor into the corner. Shot for three on the way. It's off by Jackson Young. Admon Gilder with the rebound. And he is fouled right away with 14.9 seconds to play. So Gilder now goes back to the line where he's five of seven in this game. And a lot of the fans in this building up on their feet to watch the final 15 seconds as Gilder misses the front end. And coming in is Nicholas Alame for UT Arlington. Gilder one of two. Eight point game. Warren looking for space. Narciss. Somebody's got to shoot it. And there it is. And it's good from the wing by Sam Griffin. And Gilder fouled with 3.2 to play. And it's a five point Gonzaga lead. UT Arlington's going to run out of time, but man, all the credit to them. They just came from Oregon where they got beat 67 47. This is a, a game against a top 10 team here in Spokane, and they have hung in there to the final horn. Yeah, no fear at all from Arlington. Still, misses another free throw. And a lot of credit to their staff. A really well put together game plan, and their guys did an excellent job of executing on the floor. Gilder one of two. Warren. And our final score is 72-66. Gonzaga now 5-0 on the season.